Thanks for listening to the nice podcast. I am available to deliver keynote presentations and workshops for your company or for your conference. Reach out to me, davedelaneyspeaks.com or email me and we can talk. Now on with the show. Hey there, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, I want to make sure you know that the world's leading B2B marketing expo is returning to the Los Angeles Convention Center on March 21st and 22nd. It's high time we got back together to learn, see the latest technologies and solutions, and network, right? Join thousands of marketing professionals just like you to learn from over 250 industry expert speakers, educational masterclasses, and over 300 exhibitors. And this year, your ticket also gets you into the Sales Innovation Expo and the Marketing and Advertising Expo. So it's like three conferences in one. It's March 21st and 22nd at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Go to b2bmarketingexpo.us to register. That's b2bmarketingexpo.us. The Marketing Podcast Network is a proud partner of the B2B Marketing Expo for 2023. We'll see you in LA. Don't do it on your own. I, I mm. did that and it took so much longer than it should have to figure some of this stuff out. You know, find, find somebody that you respect, you know, at least one person, if not a few people to help you and to, and to provide guidance because there just really isn't a reason to have to figure this all out on your own. Nice. 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 Nice with Dave Delaney. Welcome to the Nice Podcast, all about communication, collaboration, and becoming better leaders. I'm your host, Dave Delaney from FutureForth.com, where, where we help fast-growing technology companies retain talent and improve culture and communication so you have happier more connected teams. Today, I'm speaking with Brian Moyer, former president and CEO at the Greater Nashville Technology Council. He's an entrepreneur, innovation broker, an advisor, board member, and master connector, my kind of guy. He was featured on the Nashville Business Journal's 2020 and 2021 Power 100 list of most influential business leaders in Nashville. Brian, welcome to the Nice Podcast. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. Yeah. Still, get, still getting used to that former title. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, when we're recording this, you, 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 are, you are, what, less than a week away from, uh, from stepping out of the... Uh, the, the yeah, the, com completely stepping out. That's right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, let me start by... I'm going to ask you about that, but let's start by asking you my, my question I always like to start with, which is, what's the nicest thing someone has done for you recently? So I had um, a little inkling that you were going to ask that. And unfortunately, <laughs> I, I've, uh, I've got a list of a bunch of people here and a bunch of nice things. I mean, hey, we live in Nashville, right? Yeah. It's, it's a nice city. We, we pride ourselves on that and mm -hmm. on being helpful and friendly. And uh, do I have to just select one? Well, something <laughs> recent, the most recent. Okay. Could have been um, today. Well, <laughs> I had um, I, I had a couple of friends, Paul Kleincroft and uh, David Houghton, that uh, showed up at 6 a.m. this morning to go on a bike ride with me at 43 degrees. Ooh. So that, that, was, um, <laughs> that, was, that was pretty nice and, and quite the brisk, energizing way to start the day. Um, <laughs> that is nice. Were they, were they, uh, uh, did they just show up and tell you, you have to go or were you? <laughs> no, we had this, we had it planned. We had it planned before we realized it was going to be so chilly, but. Uh, it's yeah. So we're recording this in late April and the weather has been sort of a, a, a roller coaster recently. I mean, we've had 80 degree days. We've had, uh, yeah, like this morning, 40 degree uh, mornings and, uh, yeah, it's been a little topsy turvy. As long as the, as long as the tornadoes and things stay away, then I, I could put up with it, though. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been uh, so recently. I would say that that was a pretty nice thing to do to mm -hmm. um, accommodate an early morning and a and a cool morning. But you know, there's there's just a whole list of things that have happened, people that have helped me along the way. Um, yeah, but. Uh, that that I would say is the most recent. Well, let's uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Who is someone that was especially nice to you in your career, maybe earlier out on, uh, you know, kind of along your journey? So as I as I was thinking about this in, in anticipation, um, mm. when I moved here in '99, um, 
I, I came to Nashville with my first tech startup. I'd had other startups uh, prior to that. <clears throat> and the, this, this particular company was um, focused on a healthcare solution. And that's what brought me to Nashville, like so many, many others. Um, but early on, um, I met uh, John Kepley. We mm. were both... Both of our companies were a part of, at the time, this was the early 2000s, the, the future, uh, Music City Future 50. So we were, both, we were both running, you know, one of the fastest growing startups or companies in, uh, in Middle Tennessee. And we met uh, along the way and just really became good friends. And he's helped me so many times through my career, um, just as a friend, as a sounding board, um, I... I uh, I recall one time in particular, right before I took the role uh, as CEO of the Tech Council, I was I was serving as CIO for a um, a software company that was headquartered here, but all of my team was in Dallas, and then we bought another company out in California, and so I spent three years on a plane, um, and I s- just decided that I had to get off of that that merry-go-round. And so I went to John and said, hey, man, I don't have a clue. I've never looked for a job in my entire life. How do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he, he walked me through that process. This gets into a much longer story, but mm. uh, a, you know, a, a, really, a really cool story that as he was taking me through this process of thinking through, you know, what are the most important things to you? Well, it's got to be Nashville based, it's got to be tech. It does not have to be uh, healthcare. I'd had, um, you know, a, a really good experience as president of Tennessee Hymns, which is the the healthcare information management uh, group. Mm. Um, and so I thought, you know, a, a nonprofit role might not be a bad thing. And literally, the day I'm in his office and we're going through this process, he gets a call from the chairman of the board of the Tech Council saying. Hey, um, we are entering into a search for a new CEO. Let us know if you have any potential candidates. And mm. just really bizarre, but that's kind of how it all came about. Do you think a lot of the, the this, uh, uh, as far as like career growth and and success? I mean, obviously luck plays a role and and timing plays a role, but I think relationships also play a big role. Um, and, and the fact that you and, and John connected, did you, I'm often curious about how entrepreneurs not just meet, uh, and, and, but also in a networking sort of way, like how did you and John, when you first, you know, you obviously had a good rapport with one another. So did, did was it something, I, I don't mean to say formal, but was it something that like, Hey, let's keep each other accountable. Let's help one another. Or was it more you reaching out to him from time to time or vice versa? Or was it just, you guys are meeting weekly for beers and Hey. <laughs> so a little, a little bit of all of that, actually. Mm. I mean, this, this goes back, what, 20 years that, uh, that we've right. known each other. And so there've been periods of time when we had a regular cadence and, you know, let's hold each other accountable. Um, and then you know it, one or the other of us would get would get real busy, and especially as I was traveling all the time, it was it was a little harder to keep that up. But mm. um, in this case, it was you know I'm reaching out. I knew he was he was doing career counseling work like that, which is why I reached out to him. And so this was uh. this was a little more uh, intentional. Um, mm. But those relationships, I mean, it's why we we. I'll say brag. I'm putting air quotes up. You can't see, but um, we we really highlight as 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 we're talking to people. We being anybody involved in kind of the economic development arm of 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 Nashville, and we're talking to people that are thinking about moving here or moving their company here. You know, in my case, those are all tech focused kind of conversations. But we um, we really talk about. Um, kind of what, what I call the Nashville way, because people always say, I can't believe how easy it is to 
connect with people here mm. and how collaborative you all are and how well you work with the chamber and the state and the city and who, whoever it might be. And, you know, we've, we've kind of all come to this, uh, the saying that you can get a first appointment with almost anybody in town. Mm. The second one you got to earn, but the first one, people just do that. And I've, I've really tried to live that. I know I almost feel like it's my job or my obligation or my responsibility. You know, just yesterday I met um, an entrepreneur that was here from North Carolina. You know, he's here to meet with some angel investors. There was there was nothing that I'm necessarily going to gain from that meeting other than meeting a you know a, a new entrepreneur and hearing about his company. And I I made time for that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there was another young man up here from Atlanta. Uh, same thing. Just you know, somebody introduced us, and I said, "Absolutely, I'll I'll take that meeting." And I think over time, you build those networks, and hopefully, you know, I can make some introductions along the way that'll help them out. Or you know, if I'm looking for a particular introduction in in Raleigh or in Atlanta, I can reach out to these guys and um, and and make that connection. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's a big part. Well, first of all, moving to Nashville, like when I moved to Nashville in 07 from Toronto, um, yeah, I was blown away by just how warm and welcoming everybody was. Like every every person that I reached out to for sort of an introductory coffee uh, uh, said yes. You know, there was nobody that said no. <laughs> and I and, think, and isn't that amazing? <laughs> it is amazing. And I, I wonder sometimes though, with, with the rapid growth of Nashville and, and the fact that so many new folks are moving here from other places across the country and the world, really, um, whether that ethos is, is still as, as vibrant and as strong, I, I, in a way, I don't know, I don't know, you know, with any certainty if it, if it is or isn't, but I, I feel like, I feel like it is, and I feel like it is because newcomers who come to Nashville, and I get people reaching out to me as well and say, hey, you know, I saw you do X, Y, and Z, and I'm moving to Nashville, and I'd love to grab a coffee. And I, you know, I'll always say, or most of the time at least, I'll say yes yep. if the schedule permits. Um, and I think because it's it's almost like karma, right? Like you're planting the seed. So by me saying yes to meet with somebody who's, let's say, from New York City, um, who maybe in, is in a city that's so busy that that it would be hard to to replicate this kind of hospitality or this kind of warmth that by me saying yes, they're more likely to say yes to the person that asked them. So maybe it's a matter of sort of a karma kind of thing. I don't know. Well, I think so. And I can tell you that <clears throat> it can be exhausting. You know, there's, yeah. there's been times when I, I just had a, a totally packed calendar with these kinds of meetings and it's like, Holy cow, how long can I keep this up? But mm -hmm. um, I think it's so important, which is why I'm willing to continue to invest, even when there's no, no direct return mm -hmm. to me. You know, that's not what it's about. Right. It's all about paying it forward. Um, and whenever I have a chance to address a group of local business leaders, so here, your audience, um, the, you know, I, I want to make the point that let's not lose that. That is so important, such an important part of Nashville's business climate that we all have this obligation to continue this. I just think it's one of the things that makes Nashville so very unique and special. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I totally agree with you. So what's an early lesson that you learned in, in leadership, maybe something that you still practice today? You know, I think for me, leading by example, and, and sometimes this has honestly got me in trouble mm. uh, as, as an entrepreneur. So speaking to, speaking to entrepreneurs, it was difficult for me to make the adjustment from, you know, kind of a one-man shop or a two-man shop to having, having a team because uh, they're in, in trying to lead by example, you know, I, in the early days, I was putting in 20 hour days, you know, like, like so many, uh, so many founders do. Yeah. And I expected, um, when, when we were 
talking about um, a new feature that we wanted to add, I knew how long it would take me to make that happen. And I expected the same kind of turnaround from the team. And yet what I finally came to realize was this isn't realistic Mm -hmm. because I'll work 20 hours. I'll work all night. I'll do whatever it takes. And I can't necessarily expect um, my, my, my team to do that same thing. But nevertheless, I, I think that leading by example is, um, is important. Um, when I was, I, I mentioned uh, Tennessee hymns, that, that was such a great experience for me to, as a volunteer, so that's, you know, that's not a paid position. I was a volunteer president for two years of that organization leading a group of, I think it was 45 CIOs, so very accomplished professionals all across the state of Tennessee. Mm. Um, and you, you, really, you really did have to lead by example in that case. I mean, these are busy people. I had a startup of my own that I had just launched. And if I'm willing to put in what I was thinking and, and, this, and this panned out and, and, and played out, if I'm willing to put in the extra hours, which generally was very late at night or very early in the morning, and they saw the emails coming out because that's the only time I had to communicate with the group, I think it um, motivated them to be involved because uh, I'm not getting paid for this. And I think that just showing that, uh, showing that willingness to lead by example and to be out there and doing the work for first before I asked them uh, to do the same went a long way. And, and it's something that I've, I've tried to, I've tried to keep, although tamper just a little bit, <laughs> uh, but, but still, even to this day, tried, tried to keep that, um, you know, lead by example. As far as the relationships you have, and obviously you, you've, you have many uh, from your work, you know, uh, in that role, volunteering, and also, of course, running the NTC for, uh, for was it five years, right? Yeah, almost um, six. Almost six years. Yeah. So you've obviously built and established a, a ton of relationships. How do you manage the relationships that you have? Um, is there something f- formal that you have, a calendar, a, a CRM, or is it just kind of one-offs kind of as you think of somebody to reach out or, or how do you, how do you keep in touch? Or do you, sometimes <laughs> life gets hectic and, and we're like, God, I haven't talked to Brian in like four years. What the heck? <laughs> So a lot of it for me, and, and I think this is, uh, I'm, I'm having to figure this out because I'm kind of entering in my post-NTC world, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm entering kind of a, a new phase here and, and trying to figure out, all right, what's the best way to continue to stay engaged with all these people that, I, that are, are important to me? Um, so I leverage LinkedIn a lot. Mm. Um, uh, not to not to pick a particular tool. I know you're a great fan of of LinkedIn, but mm-hmm. I, I really do. And some of that has just kind of I didn't set out. I don't know how long I've been on LinkedIn, but um, I I can remember back in you know like 2008 2009 uh, seeing people that I had a lot of respect for that had. 500 connections. It's right. like, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> right. And if only I could get there. And it, 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 you know, so there, there was a little bit early on where I was, I was trying to hit a certain thing, but the, the cadence that I kind of ended up with was just um, sharing things that are of interest to me, mainly about technology and sometimes about leadership. And I would just sit down um, and, and share a couple of things early in the morning um, hmm. and then got a little more sophisticated with that and, and, and got a hold of Hootsuite and used that to kind of queue up. And so now on, on weekends, I'll, I'll queue up a bunch of content that'll go out uh, the following week. But a lot of my communication with people is is through LinkedIn. Um, and I, like I said, I'm trying to figure out how I continue to 
manage that in the best way going forward? Is is that the tool or do I need to be doing some other things? Um, I don't know. How, how do you do that? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, so for me... Yeah, I'm a I'm a big proponent of LinkedIn. I've used LinkedIn for I think I think it's about 15 I think 15 years. And the way so to your point about it, you know, initially and early on, you know, with social media and being sort of a proponent of of social media in general uh, or traditionally anyway, um social networks have changed a lot over the years, but uh, it was all about yeah making as many connections and connecting with as many people as possible and 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 over the years I realized and when I wrote my book you know new business networking and kind of reflecting on my own career at that point I realized it's really quality over quantity and it's not so much about you know connecting with as many people as possible but instead connecting with like you know great people um, and people that you can you can serve and so. LinkedIn traditionally back in the day, I I would, I would tell people all the time, export your LinkedIn connections, back them up, back them up, back them up. Because back in the day, LinkedIn would also give you the emails of all (laughs) the people so that you could follow up with them. And I loved LinkedIn for that. Unfortunately, people abuse that and, and spam people and so on. But it was a great thing because no other social network gave you a way to back up your connections. And, and so that if the social network changed or you got kicked out for some bizarre reason, or, or they, they closed up shop, you'd still have that. You still have that Rolodex, if you will, uh, dating myself with that reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that changed. So, uh, so you can still export your connections, which I do encourage people to do. However, the emails and contact information may not come with them, but it is a good way to export the, your connections into a spreadsheet and then just look through it and realize, and it does have company names and locations and things. So you can start to look through it and realize, oh my gosh, like, you know, Brian, I haven't talked to Brian in, in forever and we need to catch up. Um, so, I mean, I could talk, <laughs> I could talk for hours on, on how to use LinkedIn really. Um, but I think, I think that little exercise is a good one because what you're describing is, is creating content and doing it consistently, which is awesome. And it keeps you top of mind to those who are already following right. you or, right. or connected with you, but it doesn't, it doesn't bring to mind those connections necessarily that you've had interactions with in the past, right? You're you're actually you're you're absolutely right, and and so it wasn't a it it wasn't a completely good answer to your question. Um, no, it's a great you know, tip, what, though. <clears throat> for, yeah. One one of the things that um, I think that I need to do. So one of the advantages when when as as I was running the tech council is there were always events when you had opportunities to run into people mm. and it's not like I'm going to stop attending those events it's just going to be a little different yeah uh, but some of the some of the groups what we call peer groups so there's a CIO CTO peer group that I really enjoyed interacting with and then there was a a tech CEO peer group that I launched in the midst of COVID because so many tech CEOs were reaching out saying, wow, what are you hearing about this? And when's the economy going to come back? And how are people handling that? And so we just pulled a bunch of them together. And I have, I've just really enjoyed that group as well. And Mm -hmm. so I think what that taught me is I think going forward, I, I still want to pull these ad hoc groups together and maybe just have you know, a breakfast meeting or or a dinner meeting, and be very intentional and invite different people to try and stay plugged in. So that, that's what I'm thinking. I haven't done that yet, but that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to want to do to keep those connections warm um, and and make sure that I don't lose them. Yeah, and I think that's a great that's a great idea. I think I think you know, in my own experiences, to a lesser extent, of course, than president of the NTC, but. Uh, of of being sort of a ringleader uh, and and being the go to person, you know, and I encourage uh, our listeners here, you know, you nice makers out there to to do this. I mean, when I like when I co founded Bar Camp and Pod Camp Nashville to you know tech unconferences and and Geek Breakfast and Nash Cocktail when I founded those networking events, this was all while I had a job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is all just out of the passion 
a truly of kid. I didn't have any skin in the game. I, I was new to Nashville when we first, first established bar camp. And it was really just a matter of trying to bring people together in the community and give them a way to connect with one another. Cause I kind of geek out that way. And I love, I love doing that. And I know you do too. So uh, to that point, I mean, I think what you're saying is, is really valuable. And I think, I think if others do this, like be mindful of, of what the needs are of the other people who attend the events and things that you are responsible for so that you can make a note and say, okay, you know, uh, Mary's looking for a WordPress developer. So I got to keep that in mind and make a note of that. So that as you check your, <laughs> I'll say Rolodex again, uh, <laughs> but as you check or your LinkedIn connections and you see, Oh, look, I've, I'm connected to these three WordPress developers. I should connect them to Mary and start facilitating those connections as well. But yeah, no, I think that's a great idea to still organize events. I think that's a great idea, especially now that we're on the other side, God willing of COVID. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so you had a pinned tweet, uh, that I love and I I wanted to mention it. It said the best skill to teach a child is reinvention. Change is the only constant. Tell me about that. Freelancing and online marketing often looks ideal from the outside, but what's inside many time consuming challenges. SimRush offers over 50 tools and reports to assist you in every step of your routine from competitive and keyword research to link building and technical SEO. SimRush is your digital team member. Let's hit it off. Grab your free trial today and see measurable results. Go to bit.ly slash SimRushMPN. That's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash S-E-M-RushMPN. When I look back at my career, it's just been this kind of constant reinvention that's taken place. Um... And I think it's I think it's so important, and and it's a it's it's something that I'm always mindful to share. If if I have an opportunity to speak to a graduating class, um, whether it's whether it's high school or college, to say, look, graduating isn't the end. <laughs> graduating is the beginning, uh, and and you can't look at this like, all right, you know, I've. I've I've done my time. I'm going to get a job, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because th- things change so rapidly that you just have to become. Um, y- you have to take on the mindset of I'm going to become a lifelong learner. I'm always going to um, look for new things to learn because that's the only way that you're going to continue to be able to advance um, your own career. And, and I think really be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, um, I, I believe in that concept and, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's worth getting into, you know, some of the reinvention that, that took place, but Hey, I'm going to be doing that again right now. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is my, you know, this is my last week with, uh, with the tech council and, uh, next week I start, you know. Uh, Brian Moyer version, whatever it might be here, 6.0, 7.0, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you, uh, do you have any, uh, some, some, any news to share with us or? You know, so a, a couple things. One is I'm, I'm looking forward to one, d- just doing what I want to do. Mm. It's not that being the head of the tech council isn't the greatest job in the world because I still think it is, but um, it's just constant motion. Uh, you know, it's one event after another event and, you know, re- b- b- fundraising. And um, so th- that um, th- Elise is coming in with, uh, you know, n- newfound energy and she's going to do great as, as the new CEO while I, you know, take a step back and, um, figure out what it is that I really, what I really want to do. And generally speaking, I will say that is, I want to get more involved in the innovation economy or the startup economy here. So it's, it's not like, like I said, that's what brought me to Nashville back in 99. I had a startup. Um, and it's not like the tech council doesn't play in that space, but I want to be I want to jump further into that and and really try and figure out what I can do to help the entrepreneurs, the tech entrepreneurs in town that 
um, that are really trying to make a difference. So I will be doing some advisory work. You know, you'll see some things over the next few weeks where I'm uh, going to be joining a couple of boards and doing some advisory work uh, for some startups, being very selective with the companies that, um, that, that I'm going to engage with. Mm. Um, there is a, there is a stealth project. I mean, that sounds so cool to say <laughs> <laughs> that, that I'm working on. I've been meeting with, uh, a number of kind of advisors, uh, over the past year or so, just trying to figure out what we can do to try and drive the innovation economy here. So the thesis is Nashville is really, really good. And I've been a part of this at recruiting companies. Hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a really important piece of the overall economy and the future of Nashville. But in, in my opinion, <clears throat> in my humble opinion, mm -hmm we are less good at helping to uncover or helping to launch or helping to find or helping to support the next HCA. Mm -hmm. When you look at the impact that HCA has had on this community over the past 50 years, there's no way that Amazon with 5,000 jobs and all the money they're bringing into town or Oracle with 8,500 jobs and all the money that they're bringing into town, they will never come close to having the impact that that startup 50 years ago has had on our economy. So mm. what are we doing to help find the next HCA or the next Assurian or the next Change Healthcare um, or you know, pick, pick another company that, that launched in Nashville that's had a significant impact. So that's, that's generally speaking what, what I want to spend time on. Yeah. And I love that. Tell me, you mentioned uh, sort of a board of advisors and mentors, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, do you, I often hear entrepreneurs talk about having their own, you know, cause when you're, when you're at the, the sort of leadership role or CEO founder of, uh, you know, fledgling startup, uh, it can be lonely at the top and it's very and, lonely. <laughs> and, and especially, you know, in that role. Um, so having sort of a, a board of advisors or, or a group of mentors, can really can really help you. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Do you have like a personal board of advisors, anything like that? I do. There's there's a group, and it's it's not. So I'll I'll answer that two different ways. So personally, I have um, probably five or six people that I meet with on um, at least a monthly basis. Mm. Um, so we don't all get together at the same time. We, you know, we, we possibly could, but this is more, you know, we'll have coffee. And, and so I'll have five or six different coffees with these people and um, seek, their, uh, seek their advice. I mean, it's, it's kind of a bilateral thing because, you know, I'm hopefully providing help and input to them as mm -hmm. much as they are to me. And then I mentioned this kind of this stealth project that I'm working on. So in that case, there is a more formal group that I've pulled together to help me think through that. I mean, with my first many companies, I, I was so stupid. Um, and so le le lesson learned, lesson to be learned to anybody listening. You know, don't do it on your own. I, mm. I did that, and it took so much longer than it should have to figure some of this stuff out. Right. You know, find find somebody that you respect, you know, at least one person, if not a few people, to help you and to, and to provide guidance. Because um, there just really isn't a reason to have to figure this all out on your own. Um, I did, it just took so much longer. I mean, I ended up in the same place, I think, um, but it just took so much longer than it had to because I felt like I needed to do it on my own. Mm, yeah, no, that's really great, great feedback and, and great. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody jumps on that for sure. Cause that's, that's very, 
Yeah, that's awesome. I, I tell you what happens, and I think it, what happened to me is you you get and you hear this term, but it, and it's real, the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. So for me, and I didn't realize it necessarily as that, but it was okay. I'm embarrassed about how much I don't know. And if I go to somebody and ask for their advice, that's just going to highlight how much I don't know. And so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put myself in that position. Wrong approach. That's why you need people to help you out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I actually interviewed uh, Chris Kelso on an earlier episode. uh, And Chris wrote a great book about imposter syndrome. And it's something... Gosh, that everybody experiences. Um, when I wrote my my first book, New Business Networking, um, oh my God, like the process of writing that book and and the constant imposter syndrome of thinking, I'm not the right guy to write this book. Oh my gosh. And the overwhelm uh, was, was, was crazy. And then, but you realize as you have conversations afterwards with people and you start to receive feedback that, gosh, no, you you are the right person. You do know enough to be able to provide, provide value to readers or whomever you're working with. So I think, I think, yeah, imposter syndrome is something that, gosh, yeah, everybody, everybody experiences. And as long as you're not like a a brain surgeon or a pilot, uh, (laughs) in that case, yeah, maybe, maybe you should, uh, should think about things, but otherwise (laughs) it's really important. Yeah. And if that mentor that you've reached out to isn't willing to um, help you understand that you are the right person. Maybe you need to. Maybe you need to improve this or improve that. But you are the right person to do this. Then mm. you've got the wrong person, probably. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Yeah. Great. Great point. All right. I want to move on to the lightning uh, round to be respectful of your time here. So complete this sentence. Nice guys and gals finish first. Yes. What's a nice book you recommend to the nice makers? Designing Your Life. This was written by a couple of Stanford professors who teach product design at Stanford. And the, the book starts with a couple of examples. Um, and it's somebody that just graduated with a degree and some kind of engineering degree. And uh, they ended up back home living with their parents, working the job that they had before they left for college. Because they realized as they were going through this process of obtaining their degree, they didn't really want to be an engineer. Hmm. And so they're just, they're just stuck. And another one was uh, somebody that graduated with a law degree and went to, went to work for a top-notch law firm and had moved up through the ranks very quickly and by all outward appearances should be um, should should be at the top of their career, and they um, they're not happy. They're they're not happy at all. So basically, what they're saying is, if you just like in product design, you you, you don't just jump in and start coding a new product. You want to have a thought as to what you want to accomplish first. Mm. Same is true with your life. And so they're teaching this to Stanford students, but the the the, the um, re- result was so great and the feedback was so great, they decided to write a book. So anyway, yeah, I, I highly recommend that book to anybody, young or old, if you're trying to get a handle on your life and, and really try and figure out what it is um, that, that th- that's going to be more, most meaningful for you, this book can help you out. Yeah, thank you. That's a great tip. And actually, you know, it gets back to the point we were talking about earlier about reinvention, right? Where, you know, you don't have to do one thing for your entire career or your entire life. In fact, you know, that would be that would be crazy not to to try different things. And and so I think that ties in with with this the, that point about reinvention really well. So it sounds like a great resource. Yep. How is Brian nice to himself? Um, you know, I, how I spend my time that's, that's meaningful is one with the kids and grandkids at this point. Mm. Um, I do try, I mentioned that I was out on a very early morning ride. I do try to ride. I I got away from that. Interestingly enough, I got away from that during COVID. I, I did more walking because 
while I was walking, I could have phone calls. And so I just kind of took my office time out of the house, which was getting pretty boring, yeah. and, and took it out for, for walks. And I stopped writing as much. But um, that's I, I like that. And, and that makes me feel good. Do you like race bikes or do you? Uh... No, I, um, this is more um, t- touring. So mm-hmm. um, a few years back, my wife drove me down to Natchez, Mississippi and dropped me off and I pedaled back to Nashville. Oh, wow. Uh, so that kind of, that, that kind of stuff. You know, a, a goal of mine is to um, pedal across the United States at some point. I guess I better take care of that here. <laughs> so old, I can't do it. But, you know, I, I, I hear about people doing that. Lots and lots and lots of people have done that. But I just think that would be an awesome thing to do. Yeah, no, I think that would be a, that would be a great idea. And the Natchez Trace is such a beautiful uh, route as well. So, uh, yeah, I love it. Um, if you had a billboard, what would it say? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, let me answer it like this. Um, I, n- now that I am leaving as CEO of the tech council, yes. I get my picture put on the wall with a quote. Ah, so, there you go. And so I, I gave some, I gave some thought to what that quote is. And, um, so it starts with magic happens at the intersection of creativity and technology that has played out in my life. And I think it's the X factor that Nashville brings is this creative class that we have and how important that is and the, that intersection of creativity and technology. So yeah, you know, to, to make it short and sweet, magic happens at the intersection of creativity and technology. Hey, how can listeners get a hold of you, Brian? So I feel like it's pretty easy. Uh, LinkedIn is BD Moyer. Twitter is at BD Moyer. Um, my email is brian at com. So those are... Those are the easiest ways. Thank you very much for joining us today. It was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the Nice Podcast. Please leave a review if you enjoyed this episode at friend.nicepodcast.co. And you can find show notes, links to other episodes, and lots of other goodies over at nicepodcast.co. Music by Alistair Crystal at alistaircrystal.ca. We'll see you next time. And be nice. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Carrie Barrett hosts a great podcast called The VIQ Project. Carrie, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Okay, you know how you go to shoot a two-minute video, except it takes two hours, you hate yourself on camera, you don't know what to do with it, and so it doesn't perform? You'll get all the tips and tricks you need to fix all of that on this podcast. Wow, we're going to be lining up for this. Where can people subscribe? You can find it on my website, which is carriebarrett.com. You can also find it if you search the VIQ Project Podcast on YouTube. Of course, you can find the show at marketingpodcasts.net or you can subscribe and search for the VIQ Project Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe.